Hey, I'm Matthew Giorgio, the lead designer of this business simulation game. Let's play. Now, before I was able to get to this comprehensive business simulation, I actually had to do some training on some simpler businesses. And so once I complete that training, then I was able to enter this uh, big city with this very realistic simulation. In fact, the simulation we're going to play right now is the most realistic startup and operation simulation in the world. All right, so welcome to Big City. This is where we'll start and run our full business. This is, this is the tutorial that's going to walk us through here. With a full business, we have many products to sell, multiple inventory items to manage, several employees to supervise, and many challenges to overcome. This is not going to be easy. Use your past business experience to set you up for success with this new business. So that's, again, referring to the training that I've already done. Take note of the clock. You have to properly manage your time because the clock will keep running while you're working. You can change the speed of the clock by clicking the clock or the slider under the time. So this is the clock that it's referring to. Everything runs by the clock, so you're actually managing your business minute by minute, hour by hour. The clock only stops when you go home or pause the game. You can choose when to go home each day by clicking the home icon. There we are. When you're home, you'll choose how much time to allocate to personal, family, and sleep. Home time improves your health. All right, so there's our health meter right here. And it looks like it's at 80% to start with. So uh, it seems the more we work, if we work too many hours, our health will go down. Um, and if we take time away from work, our health will go up. The clock is stopped right now to give you time to make your startup decisions, okay? So we got plenty of time to think things through. Start on the company screen. Okay, so there's our menu at the bottom. We're at the company screen by making your first startup decisions. So the menu is not clickable right now because I'm in the tutorial. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have to choose our business type. And uh, we're gonna run a restaurant in this particular example here, um, that there are, are other business types to choose from. And we can review our founder and CEO. So there I am, and there's my health level, and there's my uh, seed financing. So I, it looks like I started with $60,000 but my startup services were 15,000 of that, so um, that's gonna use up a fair bit of that 60,000 that we started with. And we're a, a limited, limited liability corporation. We own 100% of the shares. Uh, we'll actually be able to sell shares uh, later on if we like. All right, let's choose a name and a logo for our business. So I'm gonna call this uh, Foodies, the name of my business, and we can choose a logo for it. Uh, this looks interesting, let's choose that one. And now we have to choose a location. All right, so um, I can see there's three locations, just shopping district, the park, and Main Street. And uh, so the park, I'm guessing, would be uh, uh, you know good for maybe people taking some time off uh, away from work, um, just wanna enjoy some time in the park. Uh, probably not so good if the weather's not good, so I can see the actual weather and the weather forecast here. So on good days, the park will probably be crowded and. Uh, and bad weather days, probably not so much. Main Street seems to be kind of the downtown core. Uh, that's where probably people are looking for quick uh, lunch or something like that. And then the shopping center, which is like a mall. So I can actually review consumer profiles here. So this will give me some demographic and psychographic information about my customers. And so I can see you know, what, what they want. So I'm thinking about Main Street and I can see that uh, Main Street, they want quick service and a little bit of uh, business reputation and a balance of price and quality. Okay, so that's kind of the, the main things I wanna look at there. And the weather has very little effect um, on, uh, on, on traffic because you know people have to go to work regardless of, of the weather. And I can see customer traffic, so Main Street, I can see Mondays, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, they're all pretty evenly distributed so there's a, that's where most of the traffic not much traffic on the weekends some but not much uh, compared to uh, you know maybe the shopping center where it has a lot of its traffic on the weekends and same with the park hmm. okay all right let's scroll down further and these are the this is customer traffic by hour so if the main street street is red I can see that we're gonna have peak traffic right around uh, lunchtime so 12 1 p.m anywhere from well, i guess 11 to 1 p.m is peak traffic that's like 14 percent of my customers are all going to uh, come around that time and then we have some breakfast traffic it looks like here and then some um kind of early early uh 
supper or early dinner traffic as well. Interesting, okay. So that's going to help me uh, with my setup. So let me go ahead and choose Main Street. Say okay. All right, cool. All right, so well done. Next, you have to make operations decisions. Click the operations button below. Let's do that. Choose a site for your business. Okay, so this is kind of the building that we're going to be in. So we can choose economy, quality, or premium. Rent fifteen hundred per month, and this is twenty five hundred, and this is four thousand. You know, the leaseholds are three thousand. So leaseholds are what we have to pay right up front to kind of renovate the space uh, to suit our needs. So the best thing here is to actually start with the economy because it's least expensive, and then as our our capacity to serve more customers increases, then we should uh, upgrade to the uh, uh, the larger facilities. And you can see there's actual capacity. So this one only has like a, just a little bit more than 25%, more than a quarter of the capacity of the premium. So when we start getting a lot of customers, uh, that's when we'll have to level up. But for now, we got to preserve cash because we, you know, we're going to have a certain amount of startup cash. So I'm going to choose economy. So let's do that. All right, well done. Now click equipment in the sub menu below. Some birds chirping in our in our game here. I'm going to lower that volume a bit. All right, so we've got to choose equipment. Okay, so we, this is our restaurant equipment. So we've got starter, starter, deluxe, deluxe, prime, prime. So the difference here is that this is used and this is new, and also the capacities. So I can see the capacity. That's how that's how many customers I can serve in like the, around the same time. That increases based on the the cost and size of the equipment. Okay, so again, I think I'm gonna, I should start with the lowest cost and then move up. So I've got the choice between 5,000 used or 10,000 new. Uh, one's under warranty and one isn't. And actually this one has a little bit more capacity too. So you know what, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna choose this one. Now we actually can sell this equipment later when we wanna upgrade, we can sell it, but I think we're only gonna get a, a certain percentage uh, if we sell, I think it's like 30% if we, uh, of what we originally paid for it. But, you know, if you're growing, um, you've got to do that. So anyway, let's go ahead and choose Starter New. Well done. Now click Schedule in the submenu below. All right. So your business is not yet scheduled to open for customers. This allows you time to prepare your business, such as ordering and receiving inventory, hiring employees, and other activities. Once you're ready to serve customers, return to the screen to set your operating hours. We cannot set them right now. Okay, so this is where we would set our operating hours. All right, let's continue. Click documents in the sub menu below. New businesses must register with the government, qualify for permits, and pay for a variety of business services. Everything your business needs has already been set up for you, and you can review the costs on this document screen. So I can see that there's business registration and tax ID. So right now I can't actually click, but I think if I've come back to the screen, I'll be able to look at these in more detail. So some of these are one-time costs and some of them are recurring costs. And uh, if you remember, we had a 15,000 startup. So a lot of that $15,000 is actually uh, uh, used by these uh, services that we had to incur. And uh, we haven't paid for them yet. They're, uh, they've invoiced us, so we're gonna have to pay them in a minute. All right, now click the finance button below. These are your payables, here they are, which are bills or money that you owe. You must frequently return to the screen and click the amount you wanna pay on each payable. You must do this, otherwise you'll risk going bankrupt. I also happen to know that the benefit of paying bills quickly is uh, it'll help our business reputation. So if you pay people quickly, they, they like doing business with you, so it'll uh, help uh, build up goodwill with our vendors. All right, so your new startup business is launched and the clock has started. Oh, okay, look, the clock is moving now. You're on your own now, good luck. All right, okay, so we're on our own. We're not scheduled to open yet and we gotta start making some decisions. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually slow down the clock just a little bit. So we can, we can do that by clicking on the clock and adjusting the speed or we can use this little slider and click on slower speed and you'll see the clock is slowed down now. So this gives us more time. I think there's, yeah, there's five settings here. We can really slow it down. So sometimes it's gonna be beneficial for us to speed up the clock and sometimes to slow it down. Cause you know, the more days we can get through our business, the more chance we have of making profit and growing our business. 
So we want to go quickly, but we don't want to go so quickly that uh, we're unable to make uh, decisions, right? You know, if I'm trying to make some decisions, the customers are coming, and I'm trying to serve them and all that, it's going to be, it's going to be too difficult. So, so we'll be adjusting that as we go. But right now, there's no pressure because uh, we're not yet scheduled to open for business. So let's do a couple things. Let's take a look at those, uh, those documents that we looked at. So, for example, insurance. And so this is going to cover most of our costs. So we can see what, you know, what insurance is and how much it costs. We can look at uh, business registration. So I see there's a $1,500 startup fee, and we're going to be charged a yearly fee of $250 as well. So we can review all of those things. Let's go to our finance, and here's all the bills that we owe. Let's go ahead and actually pay those bills because I don't like owing money for a very long period of time, especially if I have the money to pay somebody. I'd rather just pay them off. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Great. So we don't owe anybody any money. Although look at our cash, <laughs> it went down from sixty thousand to forty uh, to twenty-four thousand. That's because not only do we have the startup, but we also had the site with our rent and the equipment that we had to buy and the leaseholds that we had to pay for. All right. So it costs money here to run a business like this. All right. So let's go to our products. Right, let's see what we're selling. Okay, so it's a restaurant. I can see I've got a hamburger. I can click on it, see hamburger, french fries, chicken strips, salad, chicken wrap, vegetable wrap, cola, juice, coffee, water, pie for dessert. Oh, we got bacon and eggs, that's good. And ice cream sundae. Okay, so we got everything here, great. I can see there's no quality yet. That's because uh, I know we don't have any inventory. And there's a the price, so there's a default price, but I can change the price, like let's say, on our hamburger instead of four bucks you know we could we can make it uh, let's say uh, a little bit more let's just go 420 anyway I probably shouldn't be tweaking the prices yet until I get some feedback from my customers or see see how much this stuff costs all right so most of this is empty because I haven't got any sales so let's go to inventory all right so this is where I have to buy all the ingredients that make everything all right so I can see like there's hamburger meat so if I go back to products and look at hamburger, it's a fl fr flame broiled hamburger in a bun. Okay, that's cool. All right, let's go back to inventory for a second. And actually, there's some tabs up here, and I can see usage. So it shows me the, how each inventory item is used. So I can see a hamburger meat. I need one serving of hamburger meat for a hamburger. All right. And actually, buns, that's used in a hamburger as well. So I need buns and uh, you know some other things. But anyway... I'm going to buy everything because I want to sell everything. Uh, now we're going to go to our suppliers. Okay, so we have different suppliers to choose from. And I can see these are our suppliers. These guys say our food may be frozen, but so are our low prices. Okay, so they've often, looks like they're positioning themselves as the lowest cost provider, but frozen food. So maybe the quality is not as good there. And then to see top meats and artisan bakery. So that sounds like top quality meat if I want to have really great uh, burgers and chicken and so on. Your best value supplier for quality and price, I like that. Premium beverages, okay, so I can, looks like I can buy drinks at a good price just from these guys, but it says just beverages, so that means they only sell beverages. And uh, Farmroy, locally sourced organic foods, okay, that sounds expensive, but also sounds uh, delicious and what a lot of customers might want these days. All right, so we got some decisions to make. This is our shipping options. Okay, so we got to worry about shipping. So who's got the fastest shipping? Because I want to get started selling right away. Okay, so I've got uh, one and one. Yeah, it looks like the fastest I'm going to get is prices. That's the frozen food. Okay, so that may not be where I want to stay, but just for the sake of getting some sales as soon as possible, I'm going to go with prices. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and order inventory. So I'm going to choose prices as the supplier and this shows me everything that, that they have available for sale and they looks like they sell everything which is good let me just check uh, m and b that's the meat and bread so meat and bread only has meat and bread so i wouldn't be able to get all my stuff from this supplier so i i could get maybe just my meats here or just my bread or both and then get the rest from other suppliers so i'm gonna have to experiment to see Who's going to give me the kind of best price and best quality? And actually, look at the quality of this of these guys' ingredients, 100%. So this is the, t the best quality ingredients. Now let's go to prices where we're going to uh, look at. Okay, the prices. Look, at the quality is half as good. So that's not going to be as great for my customers. Uh, what about prices? Just like look here. 
a buck for hamburger meat. What about uh, yeah, lemon B? Oh, hamburger meat's two bucks, so it's twice as expensive, um, but better quality. So you know, if I go with these guys later, I'm gr probably gonna have to raise my prices. But if uh, customers want better quality, they're probably willing to pay a little bit more for it. So anyway, I'll have to keep that in mind for later. So let, right now, let's just get some inventory and start making some sales. All right, so I'm going to click on this one. Instead of just clicking how many I want, I'm going to use this quantity discounts here. This will allow me to quickly get a bunch. And I get discounts if I buy more higher quantities, which is good. We keep that in mind as well as we figure out our best patterns for ordering inventory. So lots of experimenting we're going to have to do to figure out, you know, uh, how much inventory we're selling, you know, what's the top sellers, how much we have to buy, you know, if people are liking our product products and our quality and so on. All right, so we got 100 everything. Let's go ahead and sell, uh, select expedited shipping so we can get it in one day plus one day delivery. So it's still going to take a couple of days. It's going to cost a hundred and some bucks just for delivery. Actually, 170 just for delivery. Wow, that's because we want it fast. So you got to pay for it. All right, so inventory ordered. So now we got to wait for it to come. That's okay. We've got other things we can do. So we can review the order. Here's the order we just placed, and we can look at it. And I can see I can duplicate the order. So that'll make it easy if I want to uh, keep ordering the same order every time. I don't have to click all, all those times. All right, so that's cool. Let's close that. All right, so that's all of our products area. Let's take a look at employees. Okay, so we've got me, the founder and CEO, and... I'm working in the business by not taking a salary. Okay, to keep your living costs low, you're living a frugal lifestyle and paying your costs with personal savings. Keep this in mind when reviewing the profits and cash flow for your business because they would be impacted if you were taking a salary. So basically what this is telling us is that we're not getting paid as owners and operators of the business. However, if we generate profit in the business, then that profit could be our pay. So the more profit we generate, you know, the more uh, salary we can pull out of the business. Let's see. Okay, job applicants. All right, so these are all the employees we can hire. But you know what? I'm going to, I'm not going to hire any employees yet. I'm going to skip over this for now. Let's just uh, try to make some sales. I'm not going to do any marketing either because that's kind of, uh, you know, that I got to make some good decisions. I don't want to waste my money until I know that I'm getting some customers and making some money. So, so let's go ahead and try to get to some sales as quickly as possible. Now I'm just doing this so that we can make those sales fast. I wouldn't normally do this if I was trying to do really well here, but all right, so I notice the clock has been ticking all this time, so it's 5 p.m. Let's go home. So we're gonna click on the home icon here, and uh, it looks like, yeah, it's at 30 minutes commute time, so it looks like uh, it takes 30 minutes for us to go home and then 30 minutes to come back. Uh, so let's go ahead and choose Let's see, we're going to choose, uh, oops, I clicked the wrong one there. That's okay. That's, the, uh, oh, this is, it's midnight now, and this is the end of day report. Now, there's no numbers here. We'll look at this later when we actually have some sales. It looks like I got to work kind of early this, uh, this morning. Let me accelerate that time clock and get that time moving uh, a little bit faster. Now, again, I don't actually have inventory. It hasn't arrived yet. I think we still need another day to get there so rather than uh, I mean I can spend some time looking at other parts of my business and so on but rather than do that I'm going to actually just go home again and now I'm gonna choose a proper time I'm gonna get to work let's say uh, just before 7 a.m. or around 7 a.m. with commute time here all right and we have to set our operating hours too we can't forget that because otherwise we're not open all right so our progress is saved, so the simulation saves every every uh, simulated day. All right, let's see, do we have, uh, has our inventory arrived yet? Still not yet. I think it's going to arrive, uh, it might actually arrive this afternoon. But um, let's open tomorrow. So while we're waiting for that to happen, oh, look, it's arrived. Let's slow down that clock. Hold on. Slow down that clock. All right, so we've got inventory. Let's go and look. We can close that. Oh, there we go. We're ready, ready to rock and roll here. Okay, so now let's open up our business. So what time is it? 10 a.m. The clock's ticking. Let's try to get this rush hour. What day is it? Wednesday. Okay, 
Let's set our operating hours for Wednesday. By the time I finish this, it's going to be like 11 o'clock. So let's open at 11 and let's play. Let's go a little late today. Let's go till 8. Let's see if we can serve a bunch of customers. And we also want to open on Thursday as well. As well. Let's uh, go ahead at 8 a.m. to 7. And then uh, Friday, same thing. And yeah, we'll do this. We'll set this up for every day. And we can change every day. As you can see, every day can be different. Sunday, you know what? Let's open for brunch, kind of breakfast, brunch on Sunday and lunch and just leave it at that. And then uh, Monday, same thing. We can come in here and change these at any time, you know, as we're discovering more information about our sales and our customers. Uh, let's so let's you know what? Let's do one more hour for today. Try to make a little bit more money. I uh, don't have any employees to schedule yet, so there's no employees. That's OK, because we want to figure out, if, you know, what's going on first before we spend money. Uh, on employees and marketing and so on. All right, let's uh, close this down. There's our there's our building, by the way. There's our business right there. And there's going to be how many products we're selling and our revenue. And that's us right there, our little icon. Um, let's move the clock up faster so we can get to 11 o'clock and open for business and get some excitement happening here. All right, here we go. Here come our customers. There they are, these little dots. Um, although those dots are going to be little people in a, in, a, in a short while, but they represent people at the moment. Look, this is the feedback from our customers that's appearing above. And you can hear a ding. That ding is a sale. And that little blurp that we hear, that blurp is a missed sale. So we can see here this little X. We're, we're missing out on sales for some reason. Oh, no, something's, something's off. So we'll have to figure this out. And you can see the, um, the little happy faces or if they're sad faces. That's the customer feedback, if our customers are happy or not. And then these icons that appear. If an icon appears on the left side of the face, to our left of the face, that means something negative is happening. And if icon appears on the right-hand side of the face, that means uh, the, there's positive feedback from the customers. And if no icon appears, that means it's neutral feedback. Because in the real world, most customers don't actually give you feedback. It's kind of, you know, if they're not really happy or really unhappy, they're usually not going to say anything. So what we're seeing here is basically people who are really happy or quite unhappy. And, uh, and we've definitely run into some problems here because we're losing a lot of sales. Uh, that's okay, though, because this is just our first day in business. We'll figure things out. That's part of this experience is to actually run into problems, fail on certain things, and then uh, learn from that and continue to improve because you definitely learn a lot more uh, from making mistakes than, uh, than you do if everything went, went well really easily. All right, so we, uh, we're going to look and see what's going on here while that's happening. Let's take a look to see if we can see what's happening here. Oh, look at that. We ran out of oil seasoning and condiments, which are used in pretty well everything that we make. And that's what's our killer here. All right, so lesson learned here that we should should have really ordered a lot more of that, uh, of that item. And we would have uh, made a lot more sales for the day. All right, so I think we're just about uh, ready to close the business. All right, there we go. It's closed. Let me slow down the clock now to give us a little bit more time to figure things out. So we've served 92, uh, I think we've sold 92 products and lost out on 114. Our revenue for the day is 280, so not a great day. Now what I really should do is I should actually go uh, to my products and immediately order inventory. And again, I'm gonna have to go to prices with expedited shipping to try to <laughs> increase this quantity. You know, I'm gonna do 500 this time and uh, I can still everything else looks like it's still okay like a lot of things I didn't sell mostly because you know like you, you couldn't you couldn't cook them because I ran out of this important agree, ingredient but let me so since I'm here let me go and uh, order a little bit of everything just to have although you know I'm not gonna order more meats and stuff because the quality will actually degrade over time so I don't want to do that so let's place that order all right we, we're good it's getting late. I'm going to have to get home soon. I don't want to get impacted with negative health here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and look at our reports. And we can look at customer feedback. So this will show us um, what kind of uh, feedback we're going to get from customers. Now, it only shows us up until the day before. So we have to wait for this day to be over 
before we're going to see the results of that. Same with our customer survey. Yeah, we'll come back to those uh, tomorrow. Um, let's close this for now and let's go home and get started early on the next day. Let's see. We want to get to work around 7.30 the next day. Okay, so there's the end of our day. We served 36 customers. That's much lower than I was hoping for. We lost 114 customers. Wow. Uh, sold 92 um, products. And uh, sales revenue, $280. Cost of goods. So that's all the ingredients that we use to make our products, 120 So our gross profit is $159 and our gross profit margin, 57%. Now, I happen to know in the restaurant business, a gross profit margin should probably be around 60, 70, maybe even, even as high as 75%. Um, that's essentially your food costs and your prepar preparation costs. Uh, of course, the, you know, gross profit and gross mar margin don't tell you everything. There's a whole bunch of other costs that we have to, uh, have to deal with, like our rent, for example, and our utilities and so on that are not reflected in gross profit. They're actually reflected in another number called net profit which we can see. I can also see that some of my items, uh, some of my inventory items uh, were either discarded or got spoiled, and so I lost a, a dollar and 30 of value there. So I have to be careful not to have too much inventory on hand that's not gonna sell, otherwise I could lose out there. All right, so let's commute. All right, so we're back to work the next day. Now, I don't think I wanna open today because, you know, remember I ran out of inventory and so I'm going to, the same thing will happen to me here. So I'm actually going to close today's Thursday. I'm going to close today. And on Friday, I might get my inventory, but it's probably not going to come until late. So let's not open until 11. There we go. So I've made plans for now the next two days. And I think I'm going to get it. Uh, I, may, I may not even get it tomorrow. Let's see the inventory. We'll have to wait and see for that. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at a report. Remember, we're going to look at our feedback. Okay, so there we go. So we can see now that um, day three, we lost six customers because of service. So that means my ser service was slow, which means that I was the only one working. And so I couldn't serve as many customers came in at that time. So that's where I might have to hire employees. Now, I'm not ready to do that yet because, you know, remember we lost a lot of customers here because of our inventory. So I want to see what my numbers are like when I have enough inventory to serve everybody, right? I don't want to start making decisions on five different variables at the same time. So we want to kind of isolate the variables. I can see one person we lost uh, or was unhappy. We didn't necessarily lose them, but uh, they were unhappy because of uh, price. And uh, a whole bunch of people not too happy with quality. Um, so remember, we bought all the frozen food, so the quality is not as good. And so a lot of people not so happy with quality. Now, I could probably improve that if I lower my prices because, you know, people are willing to forgive you on quality if you charge them a low price. If, you know, if they feel like, look, I'm not paying much, so I can kind of get what I pay for. Um, I think uh, we can be a little bit forgiven if we were to lower our prices a bit. Or the other option, of course, is to increase our quality to buy better inventory. And we lost uh, almost everybody because of inventory, as you can see here, and capacity too. So we actually lost some people because of our either our equipment or our site capacity. And we got no positive feedback, but don't worry about that. I think we might get some. Um, we might get some in the, uh, today, uh, the next day. So here's our customer served and lost. So we can see a little bit more details about you know, why we lost uh, customers. And our customer satisfaction wasn't too bad, 71%, so it's not terrible. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and close that. Let's okay. So we're going to advance the next day here. There we go. Hopefully our inventory will arrive, and then we can actually open for business. There we go. Get ready. There's our end of day. We're going to skip through that very quick, and on our way back to our commuting. That 30-minute commute is a killer here. It's using up some good sales time and work time that uh, that we may need all right so let's speed up the clock get this uh get the show on the road here see if we can get our inventory to arrive and so we can start making some money okay our progress is saved so that's good come on inventory uh oh we're scheduled to open remember we scheduled to open today and it's here we go we're open for business and 
don't have enough inventory. Oh, it hasn't arrived. Oh, no. And you know what? I don't think we can actually close now. I'm not sure we're going to... Oh, inventory received. Good news. Good news. All right. Do you hear those dings? That ding. That's great. Cash register. Clicking up here. Okay, look at that. We're getting lots of good dings. And we're not getting many bloops here. In other words, we're not losing many customers. Oh, we lost one there. And look at the we'll get feedback. Customers looking reasonably happy, but quality, not very happy with our quality. Not very happy with the quality. Oh, look at this. We're running out of something again. What did we run out of here? Let's look at our products, our inventory. Ran out of potatoes. Uh, Got to pay attention to my inventory. All right, well, that, we'll let that uh, go. Let's take a look at our employees because I think at some point we're going to be probably going to be losing some customers now due to service. And uh, so let's look at our employees here. So here's what we, what we can do is we can review different employees. Oh, there's our end of day. And um, we've served 68 customers, so did a lot better than yesterday. Still lost a lot. Uh, made a lot more money today. Gross profit margin still on the lower side, but uh, not you know much better than the day before. So we're definitely improving. Let's go ahead and slow down that clock because it's already past midnight, and uh, we're out of potatoes as well. So let's see what we're going to do here. So we can look at different employees, and we look at the work experience and education. I can click on employee. Let's go ahead with uh, you know, let's fire somebody who's kind of affordable here to get started. So a GIN. Um, let's see here. Food service skills, not too great. Not too great. Customer service skills, not too great. But uh, she's only asking 12 bucks an hour. And others are a lot more expensive. But let's try Maria here. Okay, Maria is looking good here. Customer service is high. Food service, you know, some experience, not too much, but 14 bucks. Let's see. Let's go ahead and offer her $14 an hour. Job offer accepted. Good news. All right, so we have an employee. So now what we could do is we can go and schedule Maria in the schedule here and looking at employees by week. We can look at Maria, for example. So this shows us our operating hour. So what's today? Saturday. So let's say I wanted to work tomorrow, Sunday. I could add her to work at specific hours in the day or maybe the entire shift um, for the day. And then on Monday, I can do the same thing. Have her work maybe just the rush hour lunchtime because that's when I think I might need the most help. In fact, you know what, let, yeah, let's reduce our hours here just until we figure out you know, how to do better and how to make money here before we spend too much money. So that's, uh, that's how we can do employees. Uh, we also have the option of actually uh, uh, including benefits as part of the compensation package. So we could do you know, health insurance and so on and their, their percentage of salary. So if I turn it on, uh, for my employees, then all employees will get these benefits. But you know, they're not they're not cheap to offer. They're kind of expensive, but it might keep the morale up and keep their uh, their, their productivity up and um, increase their loyalty to the business. So it's probably a good idea to invest in some of these things as we you start generating a little bit of money, and we can actually invest in those things. We can eventually train our employees, review HR reports to see if their employees are showing up for work and so on. And then we can, uh, we can start marketing. So once we figure out, you know, that we're making money, the next step would be to start marketing our business. And here we can look at uh, business reputation and it's made up of four different metrics like customer satisfaction, employee morale and so on. And then our advertising effectiveness. We don't have any yet because we haven't actually started advertising. So we can invest in things like signage and experience uh, and appearance and customer service and product quality. And we can put on a sale. And see if that attracts more customers. We can invest in actual advertising uh, options here. But to do that, we have to review our various customer uh, psychographics, different uh, consumer segments, and decide who we're going to target. Because we can't target everybody. I, for example, I can see here that um, you know if I want to target people who want uh, who are time sensitive, right? Which we recognize that we're in the main street, so a lot of people are time sensitive. That's the green bar. So this group M6 is the most time sensitive. So I'm probably going to target them, 
and then maybe one and two because they're also the biggest green bars again most time sensitive so I want to target six one and two so when I go to targeting I, I would um, identify the consumer groups I want to target so six one and two so I might put you know 30% of my focus on them and 30% on them and s maybe uh, the rest 40% uh, on them so now I'm a hundred percent and then I can uh, you know experiment with this and come back and actually see how well my targeting is working you do the same with messaging so here I can use keywords so depending on the type of restaurant I want to run like do I want to run a quick service you know low-cost restaurant like your fast service fast food uh, quick serve low prices I think those are the kind of affordable value meals those are the kind of keywords I think will attract my my consumers I can see things like gourmet but you know if I'm offering frozen foods it's not really gourmet and if I I know if I use the term gourmet it's not going to resonate well with my my target so this is so this is kind of interesting we have to really think about the keywords we can target we can choose up to eight of them for each consumer group here and then come back and experiment uh, to see how well each one is doing and then different media options as well so I can see which type of media whether it's TV or social media or events or sponsorships um, are, are, are the best way to reach my particular uh, customers and again I can um, allocate a percentage of my budget to these areas and then come back and see how well it's working and then adjust it so every every few days I can come back here adjust it see if I can improve my targeting and so on so lots lots going on uh, in this simulation let's go ahead and close that I can also under the menu I can control uh, various things like the music and sound effects and and so on and, and if I go back to reports I can bring up balance sheets so I can understand the, uh, the value that I'm building in my business I can uh, bring up income statements um, and see if I you know how if, how I'm making money where a lot of my money is going and all sorts of other reports uh, in terms of products I'm selling uh, and the finance I can uh, apply for loans or sell shares in my business oh, I can see I've got some bills I gotta pay as well and uh, and then the, the last thing here was we, we, this is our performance report so this will actually uh, assess our our uh, our behavior in terms of our performance in the simulation so it's actually gonna give me a skill score so we're not doing very well right now 32 percent it's pretty low skill score but we're just getting started so we've got to kind of build up our success as we go along and it's going to rate us on finance and leadership and sales and marketing and operations and how well we treat our employees and and we even have micro learning built in as well which is kind of cool so we can learn a variety of things in micro learning that's micro learnings under here where if we want to learn certain topics whether it's about learn about marketing or finance or accounting uh, we can actually uh, watch videos and do quizzes and so on here um, and refine our knowledge and then apply what we're learning in this micro learning into um, uh, for example, I can click click on that and then I'll bring up the, the micro learning module for businesses and products where we can watch a video and and then review what we saw in the video and then actually do some quizzes to confirm that we, what we learned. Cool. All right. So that's that's us playing the simulation. Now we could play this for hours and hours and hours and hours and then we try different business types as well, which would be kind of cool and uh, just keep improving our business and keep learning. Uh, in this very realistic business simulation. Hope you enjoyed this, this uh, walkthrough.